the Florida Gators went to College Station, Texas, got a pretty decisive win. 41 to 24 was the final. If you're a Florida Gator fan, you woke up today feeling pretty good because for that game yesterday for Florida, make no mistake about it, it was a fork in the road kind of game. You were four and four, lost your last two straight. You were not playing for an SEC title, not playing for a New Year's Six Bowl. You were going to get a very good feel for what was going on internally within this program. Brenton Cox got dismissed. We'll talk about that in a second. But you were very, very interested to see, okay, with the stakes being a lot lower and it coming down to how much you care, how much you love this team, how much you love this program, you were going to get to see the effort on display from this Florida program. Because it would have been easy to pack it in, easy to say, you know what? We're, we're not playing for what I thought we'd be playing for. I think I'm just going to kind of, you know, coast in and NFL drafts coming up, whoever you are, and, and we'll be ready to go when that comes. That was fun. Or at the portal, whatever. It would have been easy to just wave the white flag, right? That wasn't the case yesterday. I saw a response to action, a, res a response to the call to action, rather, from the Florida faithful and the Florida program, rather, on the road in a pretty ruckus environment. It's not easy to go to College Station and to put on the performance they did I think was really encouraging for the future of what's going on in the Billy Napier era. The first thing that I was impressed by, they played complimentary football. Like the defense, it's no secret. They've had their issues. They're really bad on third down. Is it going to stay that way in the Billy Napier era? I don't believe so. I'd be shocked if that's the case. You lost one of your best defensive players, Bretton Cox. Like I said, we're going to get to it. But the defense was good enough yesterday. Like, that's the best way to say it. They were good enough. They light up the stat sheet. No, Devon H. ran for over 100 yards. Haynes King threw for almost 300. He's not a great quarterback, but you forced two turnovers. You bent, but you didn't break. Only allowed 24 points. You did enough. And a gritty performance like that is something to take home with you, something to be encouraged by and something to move forward with. Now, the offense is where I really want to hone in here. Because the duration of the year as a Florida fan, you've been saying, golly, we've got some guys, man. Pearsall's a dog. AR, when he feels like it, when he's in his zone, when he's cooking, he's one of the best in the country. This running back room, we got to feed these guys, right? Montreal Johnson, Trevor Etienne, let those dudes eat, right? Yesterday, you saw an offense that was content to take a profit. And you and I both know, you can't go broke getting paid. And AR, was he outstanding in terms of the stats? Not really, but he had a 93 QBR, threw for 200 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. He was efficient. He just took what the defense gave him, didn't try to do too much, and he was a freak show on the ground. When they wanted to crash, when they wanted to try and come after the running back, he pulled it. There was one run where he would have scored in flag football. That one where he took around the edge, went 60 yards, nobody was even touching him. That's the kind of ability, that's the kind of opportunity you have with AR at quarterback. We talked about it in our preview going into this game. There would be money on the table available to you from this Texas A&M run defense. We saw the week before Ole Miss ran for like 390. I posed the question, if there's even 250 available for you for Florida, will it take that much to win? Probably wouldn't have taken quite as much, but they ran for 290. Montreal Johnson ran for 100. Trevor Etienne had somewhere in the neighborhood of 80. They dictated their tempo to the AM defense. And like we said, they just took a profit. They said, you don't want to stop the run? That's fine. We'll take five and a half yards of carry all day. We'll take it 50 times on the ground. No problem. Just continue to take what was given to them. And they weren't trying to hit home runs every play, but they hit single after single after single. And guess what? You get on base enough, good things happen to the tune of 41 points. So when I kind of zoom out in this game, like we talked about at the onset, to me, I saw a team that looked engaged, a team that was bought into what's going on under Billy Napier right now, because it's only year one, and he made a very big decision to dismiss Brenton Cox from the football team. Brenton Cox, a guy that's probably going to play on Sundays, and when you dismiss a player of that caliber from your program, because you believe it's the right thing as the head coach, there are two things that can happen. One is you lose the locker room. And the locker room says, you kidding me? You're going to kick one of our best players off the team at a time like this where we're fighting to make a bowl game? That's what, you're going to do that? Okay. 
and there's just segments in the locker room and you see a sense of quit. You see a sense of give up. And you would have seen that in the game yesterday from Florida. That would have been on display. There's no hiding that. The other, the other opportunity, the other scenario that comes into play here or is possible is you see a team say, wow, our head coach, for the betterment of this program, made the decision to cut out a player that would have helped us on the field but hurts the program internally. And you respect him for that. And you say, all right, he has the best interest of this team at heart. He doesn't care what it costs. And I think we saw a team play inspired, a team that was clearly bought in, and a team that I think is going to do some really good things the rest of the way. So for Florida, this year is an acclimation period. They've shown in flashes what they're capable of. The Utah game, yesterday against an A&M team with a lot of talent on it. We've seen them flash. The future is going to be okay under Billy Napier, contrary to what some reporters are saying on a hot mic. Billy Napier's going to be okay. Give this thing some time, and you saw some really exciting ROI yesterday. It's headed the right direction. Keep it pushing. I'm J.D. Pacal. This has been the Hard Count. Nick Brake does the real heavy lifting. We would love to have you all along for the party. Thank you to all the Florida faithful that already have. We love you. We appreciate you. If you're a Florida Gator fan and you haven't joined us yet, jump in. The water's fine. We'd love to have you at the party. We're going to keep the party rolling. We will see you all next time. Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.